Today we're talking about things that veterans need to know when using the VA home loan benefit. All right guys, let's get after it. What's up friends, my name is Jonathan, this is Trevor, we're your Alamo City Living Team, and here we talk about everything that you wanna know about living in San Antonio and the entire surrounding area. We're also licensed real estate agents here in San Antonio, which means not only do we enjoy making videos for you guys, we would love even more to help you and your family with all of your real estate purchase needs. So that number popping up on the screen is how you get a hold of us. Give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. We would love to help you and your family make a smooth move here. To San Antonio and before we start the video make sure you hit that like and subscribe button we do post videos every single week and you do not want to miss them all right guys so the very first thing that you need to know if you're a veteran and you're looking to use your VA home loan benefit are the eligibility requirements and really we're gonna separate this into just two broad categories all right for active duty and for reservists so if you are on active duty or were on active duty, you need to generally have completed at least 90 continuous days on active duty in order to be eligible. If you are a veteran, generally, there are a couple different requirements here, but this is gonna cover most people. You have to have completed at least 24 consecutive months as a reservist in order to be eligible for your VA home loan benefit. Now, you can always check your specific situation by going to va.gov and looking up the VA eligibility requirements. You are also going to need your certificate of eligibility, which you can download from va.gov website as well. So Trevor, I think too, when people think about the VA home loan benefit, they think that there's just one VA home loan type. I mean, is that the case? No, not at all. Actually, there's, there's about four primary types of VA home loans that you could use. One, you have your standard VA home loan, and this is one that's generally used to purchase a property. It could be land, could be a house, just a very general one that a bank is going to assign as a VA home loan. Then you also have what's called a VA renovation loan. Now this is pretty similar but this is going to be basically used for fixer uppers. So this type of loan is essentially the home loan and the loan for the renovations all wrapped up into one package. Now when it comes to the VA home loan renovation mm -hmm. type, right, and this is where a lot of people get confused, this doesn't mean you can buy a completely dilapidated house no. and get the VA renovation loan to like basically redo Ground the home. Up, yeah, no. no, it's not what it means. This is going to be for essential things like, you know, the, the bathroom needs to be updated or the, the kitchen, the or kitchen needs to be redone, you know, little things like that to make the house now livable, but it's not a complete, oh. it's not a complete rebuild. No. Next up is our VA cash out refinance loan. Now there are refinance loans, cash out refinance loans available that are non-VA loans. However, the difference between these two loans is that with a VA loan, this allows you to access up to 100% of the equity of the value of your home. Whereas other loans, you don't get to access that much. So in case you have other expenses and bills and things like that, this is a really good benefit to use. Now here's the bad news on the cash out refinance loan. If you're in Texas, you can't use the VA cash out refinance loan. Womp womp. Uh, unfortunately, no. So. For instance, my home, we have, uh, we've got a lot of equity in the house since mm. we bought it a few years ago. Appreciation has been through the roof, but we used the VA loan. Now, I, I attempted to call a, a national lender, um, one that I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, I won't say their name, <laughs> and I, I wanted to do a cash out refinance, and unfortunately, they informed me that we can't do that here in Texas. I verify that through our preferred lender, and yes, you cannot do that in Texas. So Fact check. That's, uh, that's bad news. Sorry, Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> Last up is our VA interest rate reduction refinance loan. Try saying that five times you, fast. You do that five oh, times. I think I'm good, man. That's as fast <laughs> as I can say it. Basically, what this is designed to do is help you reduce your interest rate. Plain and simple. Okay, guys, the next one that, you know, most people know about, but it is, to me, the most important, and that is the no down payment requirement for your VA home loan. I mean, that is huge. When you're talking about an FHA loan or a conventional loan, you know, you could put as little as three, 3.5% 3 down on one of those loans, but with the VA home loan, no money down. And right now, when interest rates are as high as they are, the appreciation of homes, not having to put money down on a house 
is a big, big deal that's gonna save you a ton of money. Every dollar counts in today's economy and that's a really effective way that you can utilize your benefit to work for you. Now, and we'll talk about this at one of our other points, but you can put money down if you choose to do so. One of the examples that I would use is there's a house that you want you're qualified up to a certain point, but the house is more than that. Well, if you have the capital to put down in order for you to get qualified for the remainder of that loan, then you can do that. And we, we do have people that reach out to us that do that often. Next up is the funding fee. Now, if you're getting a conventional home loan, um, unless you're putting 20% down of the actual price of the home as a down payment, you're gonna be paying some form of mortgage insurance basically to protect their asset should you default on the loan, right? right? Now, with the VA loan, that's not the case. Instead of the insurance, which there is none, you're gonna be paying what's called a funding fee. Now, the VA funding fee is not a form of insurance like PMI. Uh, what it is, is it's what <clears throat> we pay into in order to continue the loan for other veterans, right? It's what services, it's what keeps the, keeps the benefit going for all of us. Keeps the program alive. It keeps the program alive, right. And that funding fee can range it can range anywhere from 1.4 to 3.6%, and it's gonna be circumstantial. There's not like a one size fits all, but it is gonna be relative to your situation in particular. Now, the nice thing about this is that you can either incorporate it over the entire life of the loan, or if you have the extra money to put down, you can pay it all up in front and you're done with the whole thing. Now, everybody, doesn't have to pay that funding fee, right? No. Are there situations where a person might not have to pay the funding no, fee? No, no, you're absolutely correct. So if you receive some sort of disability from your prior military service, you may be eligible to have that entire funding fee waived completely. You're gonna check this, you're gonna go uh, contact the VA and everything's going to be circumstantial. Now, it's not a guarantee that it's going to be waived, but it's at least worth a shot if you meet that criteria. Yeah, all you have to do again is go to va.gov and it will even let you know, you know what you're gonna expect to pay for your VA funding fee. All right, guys, the next thing that's a little bit sobering to think about, and nobody really wants to talk about it, but surviving spouses can also be eligible to use the VA home loan benefit, right? If you are a surviving spouse and you've lost your spouse due to service-connected disability, your spouse was killed in action or even missing in action, you may still be eligible to receive their VA home loan benefit. What you're gonna wanna do is either contact the VA rep or log into va.gov website and you can check the certificate of eligibility for your spouse. You can obtain a certificate of eligibility for yourself if you're a surviving spouse. And yeah, you know, a lot of people don't like to think about that, right? No, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough subject for a lot of people and, and rightfully so. But it's but, one that needs to be talked about because I think a lot of surviving spouses don't realize no. that they can be eligible to use that benefit. You're 100% right, 100% right. Next up is the appraisal process. Now, if you've ever bought a home uh, in any circumstance, whether it be using a VA loan or even using a conventional FHA loan, the home generally has to go through an appraisal process. And all the appraisal process does is it ensures that the property is worth what you're paying for it. And it basically makes sure that your investment and the VA's investment is protected, yeah. right? I yeah. mean, in a nutshell, that's all it really is. Any lender who's lending money is gonna wanna make sure that what they're backing is gonna be worth it. Exactly. That's what the appraisal is. Now, from the time the appraisal is ordered to the time that it's all the way processed and then the lender receives that appraisal bag, it usually takes about seven to 10 days, so generally a pretty quick turnaround. Now, sometimes people are a little bit weary of VA home loans in the appraisal process. Agents who are unfamiliar with the VA home loan, they have, a, they have this belief that the appraisal for the VA home loan is gonna be more stringent and the house may not appraise, mm -hmm. and that's not necessarily the case. In a, an appraiser is an appraiser. He may be doing an appraisal <laughs> for a VA home, but he's still an appraisal and he's gonna appraise the home the same way. Now, what happens, right, if a home doesn't appraise? So that kind of depends, right? If you are set on this home and the appraisal comes in low and say, hey, this property is not actually worth what you're paying for it, then you have a couple different options. One, if you're dead set on the home and you're like, no, I still wanna purchase the home, then you are gonna be responsible for the difference between the actual, what the appraisal came in at and what you're paying for the home, right? Or you can always ask the seller to lower the price of the home to what the appraisal came in at. Now, there's no guarantee that the seller will do this, right? It's always gonna be circumstantial, depend on their situation, depend on the market, things like that. But that's always an option that you can do and always something that you can ask for. If the seller of the home refuses to lower the price of the home to meet the appraised value of the home, what you can also do is back out of the contract. There is actually a clause in the contract for VA buyers where if the house does not appraise, then you do not have to move forward with the purchase of that home. 
Okay guys, another question that you might be asking if you've never used your VA home loan benefit before is what is the credit score requirement? The VA does not set a minimum credit score requirement. That is really gonna be dependent on the lender. Um, a lender may, they may say 620. That might be what they're comfortable with uh, lending out. It may be 580. There are some loans like the FHA home loan, you can get as low as 580. So there are lenders who will lend as low as a 580 credit score, but it's really gonna be dependent on the lender. The VA does not set that minimum criteria. The only thing that the VA wants uh, a guarantee on is that the that the buyer is qualified for the loan. That's it. So a lender has to make sure that you're qualified, but they may have their own minimum requirements. If you talk to one lender who says, I'm sorry, your credit score is a 615 or a 620, we want it a little bit higher. Well, then you can shop around to another lender who may say, you know what? Your credit score is a 580, we're good to go with that. Everything else is in place. We'll go ahead and, and lend you money for your house. Now, the nice thing is that usually the lenders that we work with are very veteran friendly and they're typically able to approve lots of veterans who have otherwise been turned down. Yeah, if you're qualified in every other aspect of, of the loan, but your credit score is a little bit low, then you can definitely, definitely reach out to them and they will uh, do everything that they can to make sure that you get a loan. Hey, uh, Trevor, so I heard that the VA doesn't have loan limits. And so I want to buy a house that's uh, $2.5 million that I just saw the other day. So <laughs> what, what's the deal, man? Let's, let's go do nah, it. Nah, man, no, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. No? It's a very common misconception that people have. Loan limits, loan limits do not exist for the VA. Now, what that does not mean is that you qualify for a $17 million loan to go, go buy a mansion in Beverly Hills or Austin, Lake, LBJ, whatever you want to do. Then what does it mean, bro? So essentially what that means is that you still have to get qualified through a lender because at the end of the day, the VA is not the one who is lending you the money, it's the lender. All the VA is there for is that in case you default on your loan and stop making payments, the VA will make sure that the bank or whoever your lender is gets paid back. Now, that being said, let's say you qualify for $500,000, the VA will ensure that all that $500,000 gets paid back to the lender, which is why usually VA interest rates are usually more favorable than FHA loans and conventional right, loans. Right, because it's a 100% backed loan. Mm, exactly, right. exactly. So that $2.5 million house that I want to go buy like right after this, I can't go get a loan for that? Hey, you go give it a shot and let me know how it works out. <laughs> right. I'll be watching from a distance. All right, guys, so that was, uh, that was quick. Um, we didn't get into the weeds of each one of these things, but we did want to bring them up just so you're aware. You can do your own research or give us a call. We'd love to jump on a Zoom call with you to talk about each of these things further. If you wish, we would love that. Um, we do post videos every single week, so make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and come back and hang out with us. Absolutely, guys. And whether you plan on moving in the next few weeks or even the next few months, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We would love the opportunity to help you and your family make a smooth move here to San Antonio. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.